Hello everyone and welcome back to Prep Talk podcast. I am Meeda your host and we are back with another episode of Understanding APs. Today we are going to learn about AP chemistry with our in-house mentor Mukul Dhingra. Hello sir, how are you? I'm good Meeda, how about you? I'm good too. Welcome back to the podcast. It's so nice to be back here. Okay sir. So let's start with our AP questions. Yes, so first of all, can you please tell us something about AP chemistry? I guess the name itself is sufficient, AP chemistry. And one good thing about AP chemistry and similar biology or science APs is that AP chem or AP bio, mm-hmm. they are just one in number. It's not like AP physics, mechanics, AP physics, electricity, magnetism, AP calculus, AB, BC, AP com science, principles, AP com science, this, that, AP chemistry, all at once. Mm-hmm. So the name says it all. If we are going to talk about the syllabus or the content thing in that, we can say the 11th grade syllabus of a CBSC, 80% of that. And like 40% of uh, the 12th grade syllabus of CBSC or ISC I met. And IB, we can say like the first nine topics, A levels, first eight topics, first nine topics as it is fall into the AP chemistry. Okay, so apart from college placements and application, how is AP chemistry helpful for the students? See... Doing AP chemistry can also help you succeed in your CBSC, ISC boards and IB boards because IB because as I said, the syllabus content is very similar on the same grounds. I would say almost parallel to the IB curriculum, if not CBSC or ISC, but IB and AP curriculums are very parallel. And there are some schools like the American Embassy School and there are some schools abroad as well, which actually do APs and IB classes at the same time. So, I would say they, if there are some kids who are transferring from one year to the other year, they take APs as the criteria to select those students. So, it's like in year one, if a student has done AP chemistry scored a four or five or out of five, so that student doesn't need to do all the first seven, eight topics in IB again. They can straight away enroll for topic nine onwards in IB, IB chemistry I meant. So, the AP chemistry syllabus is... Very parallel to the IB chemistry HL part, I would say. SL is a bit less in compared to the HL, but the HL part of IB, IB diploma, uh, is almost parallel to AP chemistry. And CBSC and ISC grade 11, if there are 15 chapters, it will be like maybe 10 chapters are in parallel. And in grade 12, if there are like 14 chapters, I would say 6 chapters are in parallel. Okay, now coming on to our next question. When should a student take AP Chemistry? Also, are there any other AP courses they could club AP Chemistry with? See, if you are looking to major in medicine, Mm -hmm. biochemistry, biological sciences, bioinformatics, and chemical engineering, related chemistry and biology fields, it's imperative to take both chemistry and biology APs. Mm -hmm. Generally, I've seen kids take both chem and bio APs. But sometimes I've also seen kids just just, uh, looking for chemical engineering, environmental engineering and taking AP chemistry only, not going for AP biology. But yes, if you are planning to go for such courses, then AP chemistry is definitely thing. It's a definite thing given that SAT chemistry is out of the picture now. So AP chemistry is the go to solution. Wonderful. Coming on to the next question. Are there any prerequisites for AP chemistry? So the prerequisites for AP chemistry... If we talk about the course, if we talk about the exam structure, there are like two sections on the exam, MCQ section and the FRQ section, FRQ, the free response free response questions like you have in your school exams, you have to write down the answers, you have to show the working. So on the AP chemistry exam, MCQ section will not have a calculator allowed. There would be 60 questions to be solved in 90 minutes and hour 30 minutes. And you will not have access to the calculator. So we have to make sure that you know how to interpret some graphical equations, some basic algebra. I'm not talking about calculus, but basic algebra, basic mathematical skills you should be good with if you have to succeed in AP chemistry. And for the FRQ section, you are allowed to use the calculator. So that also means you should be able to use a graphing calculator. Sometimes the calculations might be a bit weird. Calculating activation energy, calculating the pH of a solution or enthalpy change. Mm -hmm. 
so some equations might be a bit weird so you need to use a calculator for those ones apart from that it should be good generally if you have taken the sat or the sat you should be good with ap chemistry the prerequisites the mathematical skills you need to know okay let's start with the next question can you give us some insight upon the ap chemistry exam format on the ap chemistry exam you will have two sections Mm -hmm. MCQ section we discussed before it will have 60 questions in 90 minutes and the FIQ section will have 7 questions in 1 hour 45 minutes mm -hmm. overall the exam will be 3 hours 15 minutes long mm -hmm. on the FIQ section you are allowed to use the calculator MCQ section you are not allowed to use the calculator between the MCQ section and the FIQ section there might be a 20 minute break now coming on to the FIQ section there will be 3 long answer questions and 4 short answer questions mm -hmm. Each three, each long answer question would be 10 marks worth and the short answer question is of 4 marks. Mm -hmm. There are 60 MCQs on the exam. There is no negative marking, whether FRQs or MCQs. So please remember that. There are 60 MCQs on the exam, which are scaled out of 50. Mm -hmm. The three FRQs, the long FRQs are out of 30 and the four short FRQs are out of 16. Mm -hmm. This is also scaled out of 50. So suppose you get a score of like 40 out of 46. So that 40 will be multiplied with a scaling factor of 50 upon 46 mm -hmm. and that will get closer to what 41 out of 50. That will be your FRQ score. Coming on to the MCQs, there are 60 MCQs on the AP chemistry exam of which if you get 55 of them right, there will be another scaling factor multiplied with 55 which is 50 upon 60 and that score would go to what like 47 out of 50. Mm -hmm. If you add both the MCQ and the FRQ section scores, you get the total score out of 100, which will be like 47 for the MCQs and 41, it was, yeah, 41 out of the FRQs so overall makes it 88 out of 100. Remember, on the AP chemistry exam, the scaling is very strict. So even if you are scoring like a 70 out of 100 or a 75, you might not be guaranteed a 5. Always think in excess of 85 to be sure short of a 5. We have seen the trends in the last 10 years. The, the, scoring scaling has been getting bad I would say for the students because the syllabus is not less if you compare a physics mechanics physics C mechanics syllabus and the AP chemistry syllabus the AP chem syllabus would be like three times mm -hmm. but still a physics mechanics maybe the difficulty of the exam is a bit on the higher side so on the physics mechanics getting a 50% score out of the total test score you get a 5 mm -hmm. but on AP chemistry you need about 80 to 85 percent minimum to get a 5. 80 might not be the short short 5. So go for 85 plus out of 100. And for that you need to get like minimum, not minimum I would say, uh, try to get 52, 53 MCQs right. Get at least two and a half FRQ uh, long answer questions and at least three and a half or three short answer questions right. That way you can get to beyond an 85 plus out of 100 and that will fetch you a 5 on 5 on the AP chemistry. Amazing. Coming on to the next question, any tips for students who are appearing or maybe preparing for the AP chemistry exam? See, chemistry is so vast that there are so many exceptions and the best way to get rid of exceptions is trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. If you trust your instincts, it is possible that 9 out of 10 times you will get the right answer. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about the one you are getting wrong. Okay. If you do not trust your instincts, I can bet you will not even get more than 7 out of 10. Mm -hmm. So please trust your instincts, that will help you on the exam. Specifically for AP Chemistry, I would say. Wonderful. Next question. Uh, any particular time frame which is required for students to prepare AP Chemistry? Students currently in Year 1 IB, A-levels or uh, Grade 11 CBSC ISE can start preparing for AP Chemistry around October, November mm -hmm. because the exam would be in May. So, 5-6 months of preparation along with testing would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. If you are in Year 2, it doesn't make sense taking AP Chemistry because you will not be able to put it in your profile. So when you are applying for the colleges in year 2, it's better you have the AP Chemistry results already with you. Mm -hmm. Although taking it in year 2, it's not bad. At least you can go away with the, you can get the credit from the college and get away with the course in college in the first semester, second semester. But still, it's good if you take it in year 1 because you are already doing those concepts in school. In the IB diploma or CBC IIC, so it's going to help. Okay, so according to you, what should be the ideal grade for a student to appear? Grade 11th, you should start preparing for it. And end of grade 11, starting of 
grade 12 year 2 i would say in may you can take the exam because your applications would go in year 2 only october november of year 2 so you should get your ap results before that when you are actually in year 2 don't leave ap chemistry okay i know this content i know the grade 11 syllabus i can let me get through the grade 12 syllabus then i'll take the ap that might not help as much because you will not be able to put your ap chemistry score in your profile and if you are not going to put that the colleges might not know if you are actually that good in ap chemistry or not trust me last year also it was like 11% of the students who got a 515 on ap chemistry so the colleges do look at this score it's not easy to get a 5 on ap chemistry so if you are getting a, a 5 on ap chemistry it's better you do it in year 11 year 1 than in year 2 because then in year 1 you can actually show your scores to the colleges and maybe uh, get better at some profiles get better than some profiles who are competing with you for the same street in the colleges wonderful with this we conclude our episode thank you so much mukul sir for being our guest thank you mehta it was a pleasure being here A special message to all our listeners we hope you have had a very insightful journey with our podcasts you can follow our channel and go back and check all our episodes on ap's and stay tuned for many more contents on standardized tests thank you have a nice day